Our word of the day, our word of the day comes from the book of 1 Samuel, chapter 16, verse 7. And it says, but the Lord said to Samuel, do not look at his appearance or at his physical statue, because I have refused him. For the for God, for the Lord does not see as man sees. For man looks at the outward appearance, but the Lord looks at the heart. Amen to that. Okay, let's read it once more. It says, but the Lord said to Samuel, do not look at his appearance or at his physical statue, because I have refused him. For the Lord does not see as man sees. For man looks at the outward appearance, but the Lord looks at the heart. It could not be truer words than these. When we look at people, you know, it's, it's, it's how they look is it's very important to us. You know, we don't, we don't get to ever look at a person's heart. And if we truly took time to listen to what people say, we could, we could avoid a lot of pain and suffering from people because we can see what's in their hearts because the, the word tells us that what comes out of a person's mouth comes from their heart. So that is truly the telltale signs of what's in a person's heart. But we know that the Lord can see deeper into our hearts. You know, just because when David was becoming kings and all his brothers became before the Lord and Samuel, and Samuel was looking at the ones that were strong and mighty and, and big and husky and and he was just telling, the Lord was telling him, you're looking at the outward appearance of these, of his brothers. He said, but I look at the heart. He had refused all six of his brothers. And David was the seventh, I believe. And when David came, he knew that David had a, it was a man after his own heart. And he was chosen to be the king. And I think sometimes we have to take a little time to just talk to people and listen and, and see what's in their hearts. And I think we would make better decisions about people or their intentions and all of that stuff. God has truly showed us that. You know, they, they may look good and nice and sweet, but, you know, what's in their hearts might be evil and harmful. And we do truly have to discern these things. In Jeremiah 17, verses 9 and 10, it says, The heart is deceit, the heart is deceitful above all things, and desperately wicked. Who can know it? Well, we know only God can know it. But I know that if we if we took the time to talk to people and see and listen we can also discern what's in people's hearts as well. It says, I, the Lord, search the heart. I test the mind, even to give every man according to his ways, according to the fruits of his doing. We can see what's in the people's heart by the way they act and what they do. If they're doing evil, then we know that their hearts are evil or parts of their hearts are evil. If we see them saying bad and harmful things, then we know that this is what's in their heart. If we, if we see them judging people and slandering and, and doing wickedness in the sight of the Lord, then good chances are, you know, their hearts are not good as well. But we know that the Lord searches the heart. He tests the mind. He, gives, he knows what's in each and every one of them. He knows those who have a heart for him and those who don't, because that's truly what this is all about, having a heart for our Lord Jesus Christ and not closing our hearts. We go through things sometimes and we shut, close our hearts and we harden our hearts, but God truly doesn't want us to do that at all. Three verses five and six, it says, trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. 
In all your ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct your path. Trusting in the Lord. You know, when we read in the Bible all the time about how God is talking about what was in people's hearts. And they did all these things, you know, and he's always telling us if we ask, we have to ask with our hearts. If we want more faith, we have to have the heart to ask or we want to have belief or we want to have love. We have to do it all from our hearts. Our heart is a very important thing to our Lord Jesus Christ. It's the place where he dwells. And this verse is truly saying we don't need to lean on our own understanding because if we lean on our own understanding, we're leaning on the understandings of the world and not the understanding of God. That's why we always have to acknowledge his ways in all your ways acknowledge him and he shall direct your path. He will guide us. He knows how to fix our hearts and get that stuff out and, and just bless us and help us. But we have to open our hearts and allow him to do it. In Psalms 28 verse 7 it says the Lord is my strength and my shield. My heart trusts in him and I am helped. Therefore, my heart greatly rejoices, and with my song, I will praise him. Praise the Lord. With my heart, we have to trust in him. We have to be able to open our hearts up and put our faith and trust in our Lord. And when we do that, you can just feel this overcoming warmth in your heart, knowing that the Lord is doing that work in us. You can feel it in your heart. You can just feel the freedom and the comfort and the peace that the Lord puts in our hearts. When we just put our strength in him and put a, open our hearts to him, trusting him, he helps us, he guides us, he blesses us. And we know in Ezekiel 36, 26, it says, I will give you a new heart and put in and put a new spirit within you. I will take the heart of stone out of your flesh and give you a heart of flesh. Amen to that. This is what we all truly want. We want a new heart. So he can put his spirit within each and every one of us. We want him to take the stone, the heart of stone out of us, the parts that have unforgiveness and anger and bitterness. We want, we want that out. We want it gone. We want that out of our flesh because it has no place. The spirit cannot dwell in our hearts if we still have those things in our hearts. We need to have a beautiful heart of flesh so the spirit can flow and God can truly speak to us and we hear his voice and we guide him. He directs our path and he's with us and we can feel it. Amen. In Psalms 30, uh, 34 verse 18, it says, the Lord is near to those who have a broken heart. He saves such who has a contrite spirit. Amen. He has. He helps those whose hearts are broken and crushed. He is close and near to all of us. He saves us and helps us. We ask him and he will do it. We open our hearts to him, and he will fix us. He will get those things out of our hearts that need to be taken out. And we will draw near to our Lord Jesus Christ. Because we all want to be like David. We all want to be a person that has a, has a heart for God. We want to be brothers and sisters of uh, with a heart of Jesus Christ. We want to feel what he feels and, and feel the spirit that he has. But I know we all have, have 
this journey. We have things to go through. We have God has to clean us up and he has to take that those stones out of our hearts one by one, day by day. And he will. Praise the Lord for that. Amen. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this word today. We thank you for just reminding us that um, that we all want to have a heart after you. We know that we all have issues and we have things in our hearts that you need to take care of, you need to take out of us, things that are deep that we can't even even see. We don't even know that's there, but you know it's there. But we know you can remove it. You will give us a new heart, a new spirit. And that's what we all want. We want to be a person after your own heart, just like David was, following in you and trusting in you, crying out to you and looking to you in times of trouble and issues and peace. We pray for that. And we ask you to just bless each and every one of us today as we go through today's day's journey and guide us and lead us and protect us. Give us a wonderful, blessed day today. And we give you all the honor and all the praise and all the glory in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Amen. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you all peace today. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. God bless you all and have a wonderful day in the Lord.